The year was 2003. Countries were submitting their bid to host the 2012 Summer Olympics and Paralympics. And you guessed it, New York was one of them. New York had an exhaustive proposal for the Olympics. The Olympic plan involved the participation of all the boroughs. Sports was going to be scattered all over New York City. For example, Queens would have had the Olympic Village and tennis at Billie Jean King. The Bronx would have had baseball at Yankee Stadium. Brooklyn would have had basketball at Barclays Center, and Staten Island would have had BMX and equestrian sports. But the centerpiece of the entire plan of the New York Olympics 2012 was supposed to be West Side Stadium in Midtown Manhattan. It would have had the opening and closing Olympic ceremonies, plus the football finals and other athletics. New York actually made it to the final five cities vying for the chance to host the Olympics. Unfortunately, a major deterrent of winning the bid was there was a problem with approving funding for the stadium. At the time, 9-11 had happened only a handful of years ago and there were those in leadership that wanted to focus on the development of the now World Trade Center site instead. Ultimately, New York lost the next round of votes and in the end, the 2012 Olympics and Paralympics was hosted in London. But the development of this area didn't stop here. Although we didn't get to host the Olympics and the West Side Stadium didn't get built, in its place, we now have Hudson Yards. Hello and welcome to Urban Caffeine. My name is Thea and you're watching a channel that talks about anything and everything New York City that includes urban history, transit, and culture. If you are new to this channel, welcome to the community. Hit the subscribe and notification bell so you won't miss future videos. And if you're a returning viewer, thank you so much for being here. As always, let's celebrate by hitting that like button. Now let's talk Hudson Yards. It was the attempt to get the Olympic bid that spurred the rezoning of this area from industrial and manufacturing to commercial and residential. If you have seen my video on Hell's Kitchen, you would know that Hudson Yards overlaps Hell's Kitchen and shares its history. That's because Hudson Yards has most of the West Side's rail yards, and the tracks are still there and fully functional. Hudson Yards was actually built on top of the tracks, which was the original plan for West Side Stadium. The Hudson Yards redevelopment project is still going on, but today we will talk about the things you can see and enjoy now in Hudson Yards. But first, let's orient ourselves. Hudson Yards is in Manhattan, specifically the western portion of Midtown Manhattan. It overlaps both Hell's Kitchen and Chelsea. Again, I invite you to watch my video on Hell's Kitchen to learn a little more about the history of the western portion of Manhattan. Hudson Yards is bounded by the Hudson River, 30th Street, 10th Avenue, and 38th Street. You can get there by taking the 7 train. You might notice right away that the station is a lot nicer, cleaner, and better smelling than the other New York subway stations. That's because this station has only been around since September of 2015. That's right, it's not even a decade old. Also, if you are afraid of heights, you'll need to prep yourself. This station has some of the highest escalators in the city. And at the entryway, take a moment to admire the mosaic art on the ceiling. This mosaic is called Functional Vibrations by Zenobia Bailey. The station is surrounded with some simple green space and public areas to sit and rest. South of all this is the vessel. The vessel is considered the centerpiece of Hudson Yards. According to the Design Studios website, the design of the vessel was inspired by the step wells of Rajasthan, India. In particular, quote, the powerful effect of their repeating steps, flights, and landings that reach down to the earth. The effect of climbing up and down vessel staircases creates a personal rhythm in each visitor. The copper color is supposed to contrast the steel buildings surrounding it making the vessel as the heart of the district. It also has a reflective material which adds to the concept of people being able to interact with it. Architecturally, it's a pretty impressive structure. Despite being so massive, it has a relatively small footprint. I remember visiting the vessel during the first week of its opening. It was actually free. 
New attractions in New York City, when they first open up, are usually free for the first few weeks, so that's a little bit of a tip for you. I'm not going to lie, it was pretty trippy and a bit scary being at the top, but personally, I don't really do too well with heights. Maybe once they figure out the safety precaution, it won't be such a heart-pounding experience. Around the vessel is open space for pop-up events like outdoor movies, farmer's market, and others. South of the vessel is the shed. The shed is an art and cultural center. They promote music, visual arts, theater, literature, dance, etc. They provide both programming for the arts and rental space for events. What's cool about the architecture of the shed is that the shell is movable. If you care for fancy malls and retail shopping, to the east of the vessel is the shops and restaurants of Hudson Yards. The mall is full of luxury brands and retailers. At the basement level is a Spanish food hall. Within the mall is access to the edge. New York has several observatories. You have One World Tower, the Empire State Building, Top of the Rock, and the one located in Hudson Yards is the edge. In a future video, we'll compare these observatories side by side, apples to apples. So subscribe and hit that notification bell. The edge has a 360 degree view. Although only one side of the building has the outdoor terrace, on the terrace is a glass floor. At the north end of Hudson Yards is the Javits Center. It's a venue for conventions, trade shows, and other large events and gatherings. And just north of the Javits Center is a pier for ferries that run along the Hudson River. This station has some ferry lines that travel to and from New Jersey. And lastly, Hudson Yards is where the High Line ends. The High Line is an old elevated rail that was converted to a city park. The High Line starts where the Whitney Museum is in the Meatpacking District, runs through Chelsea and its Gallery District, and ends at Hudson Yards. The High Line is a nice way to get an elevated view of the city. You get to stroll without running into vehicular traffic. The High Line is another area of Manhattan that we will cover in further detail, so subscribe and hit that notification bell. Like I said, the Hudson Yards Redevelopment Project is still in construction. If there are any major changes that happen to this area, we will definitely update this video, so subscribe and hit that notification bell. Also, don't forget to hit that like button. Hitting that like button means more engagement, more engagement means better YouTube algorithm, and better YouTube algorithm means that we can continue making more videos. So with that, thank you so much for watching and happy New Yorking.